Can you hear us all? Too, too loud? It's okay. And an off ramp? Okay. Cool. Okay, we're starting. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for the patience. Uh, it's uh, our 33rd event of Spec and Tech, Fantasy Fatini. Alright. Alright, everybody. How many of you are here for the first time? Can you raise your hands? Okay, quite a number. Interesting. Um, so yeah, if you weren't aware, we are like a, a bunch of guys and girls and people, uh, like a community uh, that meets regularly once every month, more or less. Uh, since except August. Eh? Except August, sorry. Since uh, 2016. Uh, so it's now 33 events, uh, official events, that we had also a retreat, we had uh, a couple of events with, uh, with Muse, and every time we meet and we talk about stuff, tech stuff, in a different source, about like, uh, a different concept. Yeah, uh, we were really serious about talking about stuff. 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 <laughs> yes. We, this time we were talking about maps, about roads. In the past we, we were talking about development, about uh, smart cities, uh, about uh, <laughs> machine, machine learning, blockchain, and all these nice buzzwords. But this time our event is called Highway to Spec. Uh, if you want to mean that. Uh, highway to Spec? No. What do you mean by mean? No. Mean? No. It's like. Yeah. Highway to spec now. Highway to spec. That sort of, yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is the Diretino that is taking the, the boat on. If you want to help us uh, give your support, uh, join the team, uh, help uh, promote events, do whatever you feel like, please do it. Come to us. Also, if you are a, a commercialista, that yeah. would be great. <laughs> We will save a lot of money. So tell Fabio, our commercialista. Yeah. Just to give you a bit of context, a brief recap of the last months, because this is quite unusual. This is the first time we are in this location. Uh, we had three events, uh, a collaboration with Muse in Italia. Generally, our events are, are all in English. Uh, the first event was sold out, almost 350 people. Uh, like the whole museum was very packed. And then this was last month, and we were at C-Lab. Who was there last month? Yeah. Woo. How sweat it was. <laughs> yeah. and you, that's why you like back in time, because it's hot and sweaty, yeah. like long, right? Yeah. It, it was around 45 degrees Celsius inside. It was like a nightmare. So this time we said, that we to go inside that tunnel. <laughs> and that's the reason why we did. Ah, great vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, we were also playing live quiz uh, on, uh, live, it was quite quite fun, and as you noticed, there was our beautiful son, and uh, we uh, presented our new brand new t-shirt. Ah, it was the, it the presentation of new haircut? Yeah, yeah, it was a, no, the 2019 model, but uh, this is the uh, t-shirt of 2019, if you want to support the community, you can buy that at the entrance. Uh, Final event of this season. It means that after this we're taking a break during the, uh, the, the month of August and then coming back hopefully in September. Yeah, we, have, we still have to get the confirmation from Netflix, but it's free really likely. Yeah. 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 And then tonight we have two speakers. And the first one is here, Roberto Cavaliere. You can wave your hands and uh, give an applause. Welcome! <laughs> Directly from Lugano, and the second, the second one is uh, Paolo Rigato from Here Maps. Welcome! Directly right from Treviso. Also, Paolo represents Here, and Here is the sponsor of the night. There are those ones that are helping us, also because this venue is quite more expensive than Zero, uh, which is the average. So, uh, I would, we're glad to welcome you on stage, tell us what Here is, and uh, give us a, a, like a panoramic of the company. So, Paolo, the stage is yours. I'm still here. Well, I'm not that tall, but I think it's better here. I don't know. I'll try. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so, first of all, thank you for coming. It's such a number. It's amazing, really. It's my first time here. But let me first thank you, Spec and Tech, so Francesco first, and all the guys here for guesting me. It's, it's simply amazing, really, and, and true. Uh, so, tonight, uh, I think our lives uh, today uh, are all about movement. I mean, uh, we need to move ourselves, uh, so people move around and we move things, we move objects, we move everything, right? <coughs> and uh, 
we have things that we use to move people as well. We have aircrafts, we have cars, we have uh, uh, transit and whatever. And we need to move things around. You know, our roads are full of trucks or similars because other people need things, stuff, consumer goods in another place at another time. So we need to move all these things around. It's all about movement. Sometimes we tend also to, to connect the concept of, of movement, to my opinion, to, to life itself, right? It, it comes the time when we say, rest in peace. Well, I mean, it's not that happy as a statement, but <laughs> joke apart, that, that's, that's pretty true, that's pretty realistic, because we, we tend to say, okay, life is dynamic, life is moving, life is energy, life is stress as well, and then you just stress when you, when you die, <laughs> okay? But where's the point? The point is that all of this movement in modern society and all in, in, in all the important sectors of high tech uh, evolution and progress is increasing. It's increasing in an exponential manner. And let me just tell you this, this, this point. Uh, some, some analytics uh, have forecasted that by uh, 2050, so it's not that far ago, uh, we'll be having uh, around 68% of population worldwide living in some concentrated area, what they call mega cities. As per definition, mega city is a city with at least 10 million inhabitants. So it's 2050, it's not that far, it's not 200 years. So what does it mean? It means that it's going to be hard to manage all this movement of things and people, transport, smart cities, smart mobility in such a situation. Because there will be an increase, an exponential increase of this movement and also of the density cities indeed. And this complicates the situation. So we're going to need more and more to know, to get progress, to get better life, better models in uh, transport, in uh, mobility and many other sectors, to know where these things are, where people are. We'll see some examples later on. And maybe better also at what time these things, goods and people are in a certain so we need basically more and more what we call uh, location uh, services. And to connect uh, this uh, location data, location services to a huge variety of other data of any type, it could be a temperature, it could be weight, it could be whatever you have on your mind, to create value, to create new business, to create new models. This is the scenario we, we have in front of us. And so we will need more and more location services. That's exactly what here technology does. Today, a part of our history, which I'll be mentioning briefly uh, later on, and this is what we want to do in the years ahead. So to conclude this first quick pitch, I'm not a developer, so please shoot me now if you have to. Uh, I have a different background, but a part of this, and I'm assuming that many of you have an interest for development or are developers indeed, I think I have something interesting for you in any case to share with you. I want to share with you what Here Technology is in a few minutes later on and what our Here Developer Portal is and what you can do with our Here Developer Portal to access to all the location services Here is putting in the market right now for free, uh, forever, and even without any type of payment uh, tool or credit card. So please, stay tuned. Thanks again for coming and let's get connected in half an hour or less. Thanks a lot. Thanks again for sponsoring us. Thank you very much. Yeah, and um, as always, together with here, they'll be back again. There's a couple of other companies that are supporting our events. The first one is Becca. Yeah, Becca, uh, we basically do interface development, both design and development. We are actually right now looking for a JavaScript engineer. So uh, if you're looking for a new job or if you want to change your career or like Francesco, what do you do in the next weeks? Where, where do you work right now? No, not really. Uh, I don't let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which company? It's fine. I work for Spassinat as well. We are hiring as well. If you want to join us. Because, because it's your company. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to join us as well, we are also hiring a bunch of different uh, 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 positions. So just come to us and talk to Also, uh, we thank again Faturi Cloud for giving us their uh, software. And also, they were the ones that gave the talk last event. 
and Digimate, if you are not aware, they're the ones making these beautiful stickers. You find the fifth edition of the sticker as well at the entrance with all the gadgets and whatever comes from Spec and Tech. Uh, especially for the new ones, you can go on our website at specand.tech and you can find all the talks. You can find uh, you can also contact us if you want to give a talk in the future. We are very happy to receive more applications uh, or becoming a sponsor. You can find all the uh, events with the slides, with the speakers uh, and uh, everything else and also the opportunities from the companies that we're presenting or that we're sponsoring our events. Uh, finally, follow us on, uh, on Facebook or on Telegram on our channel. There's some 900 people there, so it, it gets quite interesting. We try not to spam uh, and keep it minimal, I would say. We, we kind yeah. of try it. Yeah, yeah. try it, yeah. Um, Promise. Uh, kind of one of the last questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, like imagine being a guest of this wonderful event and you're thinking about yourself, wow, that's, that's incredible, everything is free. But, but can I donate to make it continue? The answer, my friend, is yes, you can. Yeah. And with the money you spend for tonight, you will pay the beers of tomorrow. Yeah. Because that's how we spend your money. <laughs> really, the main cost of... license for a whole year of a JetBrain product, so feel free to pass by and uh, just uh, request one. Uh, and this was my, uh, my another point that we will need to pay uh, this space from now on, or we invite the, the invent a mafiata, as we say, <laughs> with, with, with the Comune of Trento, if Comune of Trento can listen us. Yeah. Uh, if any patrocinio from the, from the sky would come, it would be crazy we could, but otherwise we have to pay for this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, if you have, so <laughs> yeah. or if you have better, better ideas or better places, uh, we are very happy to consider that. Anyway, one last thing, and we'll leave you with this uh, 90 seconds video. We have two things actually. Two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the, the next we'll with the one. So if any of you have a plug for the USB cable, because we are doing the uh, live on Facebook, but the OnePlus charger is not charging my iPhone, so if any of you could provide one, that would be great. Thanks. Uh, reach me later if you have one. Una, una presa USB, but I'm going to go for it. At the same time, if you need to use the toilet, it's actually at the exit of the gallery, of the, of the tunnel. So you basically need to go uh, close to Bus de Vela. Uh, you, you just keep walking for a, a quarter of an hour and you might get there at some point, okay? It's actually outside of the tunnel. Like, I was there and was... Also, there is an art exhibit outside on this side. Please, Do please, it. be close. about the World War the first, uh, so it's actually pretty interesting. Don't go there during the second attack, but after the event it's fine, or also the next day. It, it's not the bathroom, it's the next <laughs> bit, really. It's on the outside, it's... <laughs> yeah. Okay, last point, we leave you with this uh, 90 seconds video, and then... <laughs>
of the Spectrum Tech Retreat that happened last uh, October. And guess what? We are planning a second edition. <laughs> who, was there? who was there at the first edition last year? We were like around 50 people. All right. Uh, we will go live with this event uh, this week. Like uh, everything is ready basically. You just need to uh, de deposit your money so we are sure that you are there. And then we see each other on the 20th of October for three days of fun, of learning, of uh, adventures, uh, of good, very great food, of uh, jacuzzi, saunas, and whatever else you can imagine, basically. So, yeah, I would say do not miss this date. True story. <laughs> okay. Uh, just aside, we have got to the end of our uh, very noisy presentation. Uh, last thing, this is the code for asking questions to the speakers. So if you go to slide.do and you insert the code st33, or if you go slide slide.do slash st33, you can ask the questions to our two speakers. Uh, the top upvoted one will be asked. So I will leave the stage to Roberto for his first talk. All right. Welcome. It's really amazing. Also, uh, congratulations on, from my side for meeting this big community. So, if you first of all, if you want a new location for your events, <laughs> you can come to the Neutech Park in Bolzano. <coughs> How many of you know Neutech Park in Bolzano? Oh, what? Wow. How many of you were there? How many of you were at one of our hackathons? <laughs> um, who is the winner of the lesson? Uh, okay, <laughs> So, uh, thank you. Uh, here? Okay, I have to, to stay here. I can move a little bit. Okay, thank you a lot. So, uh, I have been asked to talk a little bit about, about what we are doing in the field of smart green mobility in South Tyrol. And in particular, I would like to talk about this initiative called Open Data Hub. Maybe somebody of you have heard about it or not, but it will be a nice occasion to learn about it. So before entering in, in the topic, I would like to, to explain a little bit why we are doing all this stuff. So you're probably familiar a little bit with this mobility sector. You know that probably you have heard that uh, a couple of main innovations coming, e-mobility, so electric cars uh, and so on. Uh, we are uh, starting to see cars, buses, and other vehicles which are driven by electric motors. We have cooperative ITS, so which are systems that foresee the possibility for vehicles to exchange uh, data with other vehicles, with robots and units, traffic lights, and stuff like that. We have another big trend which is autonomous driving. Probably you have also heard about that, but not only. Self-driving vehicles, but also self-driving flying vehicles. We are already moving in that direction. And then, then mobility as a service. How many of you have heard about the concept of mobility as a service? Not that many. So it's the dream to not have a car and a private car in the future anymore. Will this be possible? I don't know, but probably we can. We will come there step by step. So what are your favorite you know, uh, innovation stream? So, how many votes for e-mobility? Okay, very few. Cooperative ITS? Very few. Autonomous driving? A lot of things that autonomous driving which we do. And how many mobility as a service? Oh, that's a little bit. So my favorite one is mobility as a service. Because, why? Because simply because all these three technologies are automotive uh, innovations. So you see, there are everything that want to improve the way vehicles move around our streets. But mobility as a service is about how people are going to move in the future. So that's 
What does it mean that all these three technologies have to be introduced in a way that we are going to change the way the, the way we are moving today? So in the future we don't we, we, we won't have a private car to go from A to B. We, we have to to select the transportation service that fit in that particular situation for our specific needs. And just to imagine autonomous driving, if you use it as a private car today, so maybe you will go to work, uh, the, the vehicle drives itself, then you arrive at work and there is no parking space. And you just say to, the, to your car, okay, go and there is a parking lot uh, in 10 kilometers, so please drive with, uh, so alone and park uh, there. So we will have more vehicles on our streets driving without people uh, inside. So that's, we have to be very careful. These are all nice things, but if we are introducing them in the, in the not in a good way, we are going to, not to solve the, 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 the issues we have, but we are going to increase the problems that we have. So that's very important. So, as I said, I'm working in the very beautiful location, right tech part, and we, uh, so, we, so this is a little bit of claim we use for doing our innovations. Think global, act local. So in the sense, think of the, the, the main, the, the, the big challenges that that uh, characterize our planet, but uh, uh, try to do something at the local level. So for example, one of the big issues, environment, climate change. So this is something that everybody you know, our past knows that there is a big challenge that has to be solved. We live in a wonderful environment, so they are uh, fine in the region. So in Bolzano is also a beautiful city, a lot of tourists come every year to visit our region, but we have to preserve to this environment because I don't know even how many, if in 20 years it will look like that. And we have some issues here. For example, we have high level of air pollution, not because we are producing too much air pollution with respect to other regions, but just because the geography of the region is that way that in some particular situations all the emissions that is produced in the cities remain there. Because for example during the winter we have thermal inversion, it's hotter in the mountains and colder downstairs, the air remains there and all the pollution stays there. And this is an issue because all the people live there. Okay? Second, traffic congestion, okay. Big we have we don't have the, the big issues that of mega cities. About. But we also have traffic congestions. Have you have uh, have you ever been in Bolzano when it's raining? When all the tourists come from the valleys to really to, to visit the Ozi Museum in the city center and they want to park exactly in the uh, this, the parking area uh, down so beside the, the, the museum. It's crazy. All the tourists want to go there. This is a photo from my office from five six years ago. Third point, uh, I don't know how many people are aware about this, road maintenance. This will be a hot topic in the future. Do you know how, many, uh, how, many ma how much money we need to, to keep our uh, road safe all the, during all the years when this kind of events come? How, many, how much salt do we need to put on our streets so that our vehicles can drive safe? And of course, we, have our, we are in an Alpine region, there are, so this is a very big challenge for our, for our territory. And our politicians wanted that all the, the streets are treated in the same way, with the same quality of service. This is a very huge challenge. But we have also an opportunity, in my opinion. In particular, this is South Africa, but I think also in Argentina it's quite similar. We have a high quality public transportation service and, and the backbone. So, for example, in South Tyrol, we have already an integrated uh, public transportation service. So you have a bus, and you can use this bus to move with trains, with buses, and so on. And that, this is something that which is very, very used. So, about half of the people who are living in South Tyrol have this bus in, on their hands, and they use already a lot of this kind of state-owned transportation options. So we have a dream. The dream is building a smart green mobility for South Tyrol. So the dream is one, mobility as a service, as I said, it's clear. So we want to have this pay uh, as you go services, all transportation services include public transport. Uh, I already said we have already 
everything integrated, but we want to add other uh, services that can complement public transport, car sharing, bike sharing, bike rental, taxi, other demand services that can come in the future. And we have to remember all the disabled people, because all these services have, have to be thought to, to serve not only young people, but of course also older people, because we are in a society that is going to be older and older, and we don't have to forget these people. Of course, you can imagine, so for example, you can have, uh, let it in, in the in several market, you can have a contract for 30, 40 years. Every month you can have access to, to this everything without leads, for example. This may be a dream because you probably will pay much, uh, a little bit more than that, but this is something that we want to do. And we have also, so compared to other regions that are promoting this kind of concept, we have tourism. Tourism. So the idea is to combine mobility and tourism. Imagine that a tourist can come in South Tyrol, he, come, he enters in the hotel and he says, you have a, a package, a mobility package for one week or for the duration of your holiday there. You have everything included and you can access museum, you can choose among how many restaurants that you want, and so on. You can go to the swimming pool and do whatever you want. So the, we are convinced that we combi by combining mobility and tourism, we can be very, very nice packets for our People that are living in the region and people that want to visit our region. Second point, we don't, do not want to, to see private cars anymore in our cities. This is something a little bit stronger if you speak to people because they say, but I need my private car for moving. But I, I, we are believed that with fleets of uh, shared vehicles, with not very, just only vehicles but bikes and we don't know what kind of way of transportation is, will come in the future. We are convinced that with a good offer, people are going to, to have the facility to, to, to move in. So from A to B, in, in, in every, every moment of the, of the day, and uh, all, the, all the mobility needs can be satisfied. We are convinced that this will be, of course, we cannot reach this tomorrow, of course, but step by step, I think, we are going to reach this. For example, we can also think to implement e-bike sharing services. So if, uh, if you want, for example, to go, I don't know if you're familiar with Boldano, but I live, for example, in Ora or in Lydes, which are 10, 15 kilometers far away. Maybe you can uh, drive with your private car, why not? Uh, up to the bar, uh, parking area outside the city, and then you leave it to your, uh, your car there, and then you so you use one of these services to go to your final destination. This is something that we, we believe it is possible to do. So imagine to have an uh, enhanced, let's say, travel experience while crossing South Taiwan. So we have, you know, the A22 highway. A lot of people used to, the, I mean, used to drive along this highway. And why, uh, so imagine the possibility to have, so to give people that are just crossing our territory and saying, so have a look at what, what is there. Maybe you can stop and uh, visit a nice point of interest. So if combined with, for example, autonomous driving, maybe you can just sit and uh, enjoy your travel. And maybe we can also combine the rewarding schemes. So, in the, uh, so for example, uh, Autonomous, the vehicles that drive autonomously can also be rewarded if they drive in a way that uh, reduces the environmental impact of driving. So, now, uh, and final, last but not least, why not use autonomous vehicles to, to manage our road networks? For example, put the spreading salt during the winter or managing waste and all this kind of stuff. Maybe these are processes that can be fully optimized and maybe we can also reduce the cost for maintaining all this and all of this. So, the road to the dream, open data hubs. So, first of all, I would like to, to, to explain a little bit how we work at Knoitash Park. The idea is to work 
for our local companies. They need the, our, our main goal is to enhance the level of research and development of our local companies because our local companies are typically very, very small and typically they do, they do not have their own, their own uh, strength to, to make innovation by themselves. So we try to let them work together and work together with research centers, with public organizations that provide their needs, and maybe also other associations that could, that could be involved. So the idea is to create an ecosystem in which every everyone is part and uh, can bring uh, an added value. And this can also let companies grow and be leader in the specific markets and be competitive in the global market. And uh, I'm working in the smart mobility, so I do I'm working just in this field. And we, as you have imagined, so we have three main streams, public transport sharing mobility, so mobility as a service, environmental traffic management, road weather information systems, and the idea is to try to, to, to use the best of the technologies that are coming, for example, also AI, property autonomous uh, ITS technologies, and give the possibility to bring these technologies in the best way to the final users. That's the, the reason why we have created an Open Data Hub. So the idea of, of, of Open Data Hub is to open all the data silos that we have in South Tyrol and trying to give added value to all this data so that new services can be provided to final users so that companies can build elaborations on top of this data, can build new decision support systems for specific uh, users and so on. What kind of data do we have at the moment? Traffic data, for example, of the highway, of the cities, and of the extra human. We have, for example, also the variable message signs on the highway, so you can have in real time, you can see what the, the operators of the highway are displaying. Parking data, so real time of people's city slots. Air pollution, so uh, <laughs> pollution and F2 or other pollutants. Weather data, with uh, these road weather stations that they measure meteorological data and also, the, the, for example, the temperature of the road. This is useful if you, you, know, if you want to know if it's freezing or not. Public transport in real time and also the other for example, the sharing mobility services that are starting to grow, car sharing, bike sharing, and so on. Other interesting e mobility, we have to have all the real time data of the charging stations of the different operators, and so on. What is interesting is that we don't have only mobility data, but the idea of the open data hub is to open data in all the different sectors. Because the added value is that is when you start to combine these different data. We have seen just only in the mobility sector, for example, if you combine meteorological data with parking data, you can see correlations. But then if you start to combine, for example, mobility and tourism data, the, the level of the service that you or of the application that you can implement for the final users start to, to become much, much more interesting. So at the end, why do we want to open all this data? Because we want to, to be, so we want to let South Tyrol be visible in the Internet of Things of the future. For example, we want that Amazon is able to see, for example, to, to read the data of South Tyrol and let it be then visible to the people of all the world. We want, for example, yes, to Alex or so bad, or our cars that have these virtual assistants in the future and for example, the driver can ask to his virtual assistant, can you say me about local points of interest here? And he is able to provide this kind of information. So we want that all these future applications are going to be possible. So it's a dream is or is a reality. I would like that just to provide some words about the project I'm doing now. Towards mobility as a service, I've said, I've said we have already some real-time data. This is a very, a very bad application about what kind of data uh, we have and how people can use to, to, uh, to plan a trip. This is the city of Milan in particular, by just using these mobility services. 
We we implement this six or seven years old already. It's quite old uh, in uh, in the IT world. Six or seven years. It's uh, another year. But uh, and we have already a lot of local users that without making too ma much communication, they have seen this and they are starting to change this behavior. This is quite interesting because also thanks to the feedback to the users, this this is a just a beta application. So we also always put this beta because these are just example. But now we see local companies that are starting to use this data and provide real services. We have a, a, European, sorry, a European project called Mentor, which is uh, carried out in the city of Verano. And uh, we would like the idea is to start to, to investigate and start to implement this concept of mobility as a service, but applied for a small urban town, because typically mobility as a service is experimented in big cities because it's simpler, but in a small urban town, this is much more challenging. We are so I don't want to provide too many technical information here, but we are going to experiment some new services, e-bike sharing, for connecting municipalities uh, with near uh, Milano. We would like to go uh, to the next generation of public transportation services, so flexible or on demand. So the idea flexible is, is that uh, these buses can change the routes and not follow always the same route. And on demand, this is quite clear. So the bus will drive only if users are going to, to ask for it. And the idea is also then to, to let all these services be available in one single application. We have also, this will be the first uh, pilot in Italy uh, with an autonomous shuttle, which are quite common in, the, in all the world, and also in all the Italy, in all the Europe. In Italy, and other, like in other things, we are one of the last that are moving in this direction. Now it's possible to test this kind of vehicles. And we are going, exactly in September, we will have one week from 16th to 22nd of September. This shuttle will make, a, let's say, a route inside the city and people can have, we have the possibility to test it. And we, we believe that this kind of technology will be very useful to implement mobility as a services. Because imagine at the first, last mile, maybe you arrive at a certain point and then you just need the last 500 meters. And this could be a stop shopper for, uh, for choosing a, a certain service and not uh, using your car car, for example. We have another big, big project, big, so 4 million euro project which is called Bingo. <coughs> Maybe somebody of you have heard about it. It's, we are going to re-implement the IT architecture of public transportation systems from scratch. So in the last 30 years, the, in, in South Tyrol, there was a, lot, a strong blocking effect. Legacy systems, old IT technologies, so let's say we, let's build everything new. Open standards, modern IT technologies, we want to have all public transportation with real-time data, much more richer than, for example, what you can have with GTFS interface. We can have also real-time information about so the forecast of arrival of the bus, of, uh, of the buses. We can have, for example, the information about if, in case of interchange, the other public transportation will wait for the other public transportation, so we are sure that the other if you need, for example, from other, you have you are in the train and you want to uh, to wait for for the other uh, for the bus, you are you are sure that your bus is waiting for you, and we are going to implement new ticketing systems. So, for example, the possibility to pay with an app, uh, AMU cards that uh, is possible to use for paying with your public transportation services. And so this also was, is a project that Giulio has asked me to provide some information I put at, at the end. Probably you have, seen, you have heard about it. Brennerek, how many of you have heard about it? How many of you have seen this panels, uh, dynamic uh, speed limit on the highways? What do you think about it? It's something old. Yes. <laughs> Why? Why? Because if you need to go to A to B and you need to go slow, you don't, you don't take the highway. Yeah, this could be a argument, but 
Yeah, but you know why? Okay, let's go. We are testing these different, in different countries. I will arrive to that point. Uh, what I it's what I wanted to say. We are going to implement a intelligent system. So the idea is to activate this kind of dynamic speed limitation only when it's really needed. Only when we are sure that we have an air quality problems. So we have done an initial phase which was quite boring, uh, I have to admit, but because we need to have data, we have to, to collect data and understand what could be the impact if we apply this kind of measures. So we had to make very uh, extensive uh, analysis and correlations with traffic and environmental, and we have already seen that uh, there is an impact. Uh, so if you, you decrease the, the speed of vehicles, you, you see a decrease in air pollution. But what people probably do not know at that moment quite well is that we are using dynamic speed limit to enhance the road capacity of the highway. In particular, where you have high volume, high traffic volumes, if you decrease the speed of vehicles, you have the possibility to uh, reduce the situation in which, for example, the vehicles change lanes, the, the, the situations in which we have the situation of stop and goes, because all vehicles tend to drive at the same speed. And we have already seen, probably, I don't know if you have uh, tried to, to drive during one of these uh, days of Bolino Nero during the weekends, but the, 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 the highway is already experimenting an increase of the capacity, so the possibility to, to, to let a large number of vehicles driving on the corridor. So we are now passing from this first phase to the second phase, and now we are really testing a, 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 a system which predicts the, condi the, the, the traffic and environmental conditions and says to the operators, now it's the moment to activate because now we have, can have the maximum benefit from it. Okay, so we probably we will experience something different in the near future. So just to recap some, uh, some results that we had, okay, this is quite, Okay, maybe you can have a look at it, but on the websites we have a lot of publications and results if you are interested. So at the end, I will go quite quickly, we have seen drive on the highway and here we have the, the, the distribution in terms of Euro classes. So Euro 6 are the most recent ones, Euro 0 are the older ones. So you can see that compared to the, the white one, which is the Italian reference, the vehicles that drive on the highway are much more newer, which is good. But on the other side we have the, the bad news is that most of the vehicles that drive on Yes. With uh, a lower velocity. Yes. It Why not to increase the uh, the price of the ticket of the highway for this example? This is something that is under discussion. 
except the end of discussion. The idea is that based on the euro, euro class you pay. This is called ergo vignette, but this is something that is going to be implemented on the entire Alpine network. Uh, but this is also a, a political discussion. In the meantime, we we what we we. So what you can also do is to, to check the driving plate, and you see you are an electric car. You, I give a discount for you. This is also something that could be possible. But this is we want to have first results about if this measure is effective or not. And this is also important. So we have also made a calculation which are so. Let's consider all the emissions uh, emitted by the vehicles on the highway. And typical people, they think, oh, the high, heavy vehicles are the most polluting ones. No, 36% heavy vehicles, 36% passenger cars. And, that's the, and the, the reason why we are targeting exactly this is because, see, I don't know if, and I can't do it. So it's quite small, but this is Euro 6, and these are the emission factor of the different kind of vehicles. These are heavy vehicles, and these are the cars. So what does it mean that a car, a Euro 6 car, emits more than a Euro 6 heavy vehicle, which is something that is crazy. Why do we have this? Because these vehicles have now systems that reduce automatically the emissions emitted. And the, this is, has not been applied there because otherwise the cost of the cars have increased too much. These are just a business case. Otherwise nobody have have been will uh, will uh, buy diesel cars in the future. That's the reason why that is an absurd situation, and that's the reason why we, we have to 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 target this one. There is another reason, of course. This is the emission factor depending on the speed. So these are I don't know if you can see this. These are uh, uh, petrol cars, so benzina. So can you can you see the emission factor? Uh, at the different driving speeds, and these are the vehicle, the, the, the diesel the diesel cars, how much they meet in compared to the the, the, the petrol cars, and the reduction if you drive at 130 compared to 110 is minus 30 percent. That, that's the reason why we're doing this. But of course we are not doing this in all the conditions because we have then to consider how meteorological dispersion phenomena are uh, going to uh, distribute air pollutants to the air. So you have to consider what is the effect and then decide exactly when to activate this measure. So this is just uh, also a way to say, so if you have the different atmospheric meteorological conditions, we have different effects. So for example, when you, we have Inversion phenomena, which is this case, we have better effects. <coughs> and when there is, for example, a situation like today, today that has not does not have sense to implement this. We have some issues because, so from the Italian, a lot of, uh, of so the, 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 the Italian traffic laws, we cannot implement this. Therefore, we probably have seen this now with the green message. And that has, hasn't worked, <laughs> because the body is following it. But we are in a situation that from September, probably we are going to, to reuse this message because we are changing the time law. So just to say, we also want to, to provide rewards to people that respect. This is an announcement. This is the first time I say this. So we are going to launch an app which is also implemented by a startup in Trentino, which is called Top Evolution. Probably somebody will know it. The, the app is known is called Shelly. And the idea is that when you drive there and you have your app, and you, you so to the app you demonstrate that you drive at the reduced speed limit, you earn points, and with the, these points you can uh, win some awards, for example, an e-bike or some other awards like that. So the idea is that we want us to reward people that satisfy this very Okay, so I think I can stop here. This is just the future, how we manage the decision support system, the possibility to real time to change it.
That's all well done. Thanks, Alberto. Uh, a couple of questions to you. Ah, okay. uh, the most important ones. Uh, first one, um, what do you think about Hyperloop? Huh. Do you think that Hyperloop will have a business case here? No. no, this is something that could have sense for some specific locations in the world. That's sure. I don't know if this is, uh, is the technology for, for us. Maybe it's these flying vehicles. So I believe that this could be interesting for us in the future because we have mountains. Maybe if you have a hyperloop that make, that goes in that direction, maybe this could be something. But we have also to preserve a dog of course. Okay. Um, what if a big fish, say Google, gets access to your databases? Wouldn't this kill the small local companies? Like imagine that uh, a, a player like Google Maps gets access to all the whatever data and they integrate with their apps. At that point, uh, how could a small company no, start up survive? No, no, no. I think that open market, so the best. Uh, at the end, if you are also a small company, probably you are much more flexible than the big companies. This is I have had the possibility to work together with big companies and with startups, and in some cases, startups are much, much, much better than big companies because they are much more flexible, they, uh, they know IT technologies in some cases better than big companies. And I think it's just a matter. So I think you have to, to create the same conditions for everybody. I, I'm convinced about that. Why is all this research and implementation possible in South Tyrol and not in other Italian regions? Sorry. Why is all this research and implementation possible in South Tyrol and not in other Italian regions? Because we have no tech, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's difficult to say. Not uh, don't know the reality of other Italian regions. I can say that uh, the, the, the the local politicians have seen a problem and they have found an opportunity to say, let's be an open, so a public-owned company that tries to foster this innovation. If it's, work, it's working well or not, I don't know. Some, politi some politicians are not that uh, happy about our work. Some are very happy about it. So I, I think it's, it's very difficult to say. It's not a fact that we are on a Thomas promise. I don't believe it. It's about people. It's about investments in the right directions. Okay. Thanks again, Roberto. Thanks. Uh, fair enough. Okay, and now we go to the second talk of the night. Uh, after this, of course, uh, there's uh, down there at the entrance uh, uh, a whole evening going on with the uh, spec and beers. Uh, don't leave us before that, or at least if you want to leave, uh, it's fine because there's much more work for us. Uh, but in the meantime, the word to Paolo, uh, a big applause to him. Thank you. Uh, thank you first to Roberto, very interesting. I think out of my presentation, I can spend 30 seconds commenting. It's also this a way to share, right, in uh, real time. I think there are a lot of connecting points, so maybe we can have a talk. Great presentation. Just the only minus point was that I saw an open fit map, but that's another story. We use open fit map, sorry. <laughs> you will have a look now, eh? and you'll see that probably you have another solution, which is pretty good. Okay, apart from this, um, before I forget, um, let me please invite you, happy to welcome you to what we're going to do later on. We are offering also some, uh, some prizes, so we're going to have a draw later on, probably you have seen in the invitation from Prospect and Tech. So basically, out of those of you who have already subscribed to the here portal or would like to have a taste later on during the evening, We'll be sorting out, I think Francesco will support later on, from the list of the subscribers of all of you. We'll be sort out three uh, emails for names and we'll be uh, giving you three prizes, one could be a Samsung, 
uh, tablet, not a very recent one, it's just a couple of years, I think. And then we're going to have uh, an, an anti thief backpack with a brand of here and um, a power, uh, power unit, power battery uh, to, to recharge your smartphone. One of those who work, by the way, not those who need your smartphone to recharge the battery, which is normally what happens. So we have found something that works in it. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. So, okay, let's get into what I would like to share with you. Let me start from uh, where we start. I would like to spend a few minutes to give you some more insight about here technologies because I think it's, it's normal and it's needed when it comes to, to our company. Uh, we've been for decades a business-to-business -business company, so we are not that well-known like our beloved competitor of Google, for instance, but we exist uh, largely earlier than they. Uh, did, uh, and so let me share, and uh, let's go immediately to some further slides, let me share some numbers. I don't want to get you bored with the numbers, just you can be attracted by any of those, but let me focus on, on some of them. We are a company present all over the world since 40 years, um, and we have mapped uh, 20, um, 200 countries, so basically all the world. Let me just resume this data, let's let you scroll with your eyes, whatever you are attracted. Uh, with this information about here technologies, which probably is one point that characterizes us quite, quite well. We are the only company in the world that uh, with these two characteristics together. We just do location services, so the evolution from maps, we're gonna have two slides later to, to, to explain, to review this. So we do location services, only location services, and we do this all over the world. So that means that there are companies doing just location services like ourselves, but they are regional. So maybe on Western Europe, on North America, on Asia, if they are not covering the whole world, or company like Google that indeed do uh, a presence, sorry, all over the world. They also do location services. They also have APIs, but they do plenty of things. This, I, I'm not saying that this is worse and this is better. Okay, it's, it's just a way to understand better who we are. We are focused on this and we are present in all of the world, basically. Um, so I want to, well, okay, let me just uh, get back to, sorry, to, to this one. Uh, I don't have a slide with our customers. Again, it's not marketing, it's just understanding and you know, wrecking that kind of world that normally, it's obvious, many of people have in understanding who here is. Uh, so just a few information. Uh, four cars out of five in uh, Western Europe, sorry, in Europe and North, North America are equipped with our, uh, with our platform. Uh, our customers are kind of Amazon all over the world and using our platform for their services, for any location services, also for the project of the drones. Now they are requiring us to add some maps for the drones, so the perspective is changing. Not the 2D, not the 3D, but another perspective is one of the drone. They need to know if there is a cable, if there is a, a bell tower, or whatever is preventing them from being active and being, uh, being effective. Uh, we have Garmin all over the world, this is our brand, and we have most of the car market, of course, because we started from there. Um, so, very quickly, don't get lost in this uh, time scale, just let me tell you that we were founded in 1985, we changed a lot of names, so probably this is confusing, and this is typical of the business-to-business -business company, because they are not focused uh, till now. now, now things have changed. Uh, on the final consumer. The final consumer needs, of course, to have a well-defined brand, right? And also for the company, this is important. For decades, we were not interested that much in that respect. So we were called European Geographic Technologies, then Navigation Technologies, then Navtech with GH, then Navtech with the Q, then Nokia Location and Commerce, part of the Nokia Group, and then uh, finally in 2000, sorry, uh, earlier, we had no, sorry, in uh, 2015 we were um, uh, bought by a consortium uh, made by these two, these three giants of the automotive uh, sector, so Audi, and W Mercedes, and then our name was changed into Here Technologies. Uh, the first map for in-car navigation system in 1994 was provided by us, and yes, it's true, it's actually as you read, the first map on the web was from navigation technologies as well in 1994. So we have a bit of history, just this. Okay. Um, rapid and exponential growth, this is a slide, uh, don't get lost again. 
Uh, these are not our customers. It's not a customer slide. There's a, there are also customers in with you, but these are pretty much a slide of partnership. And what I would like to focus and to introduce what I'm going to share with you in a minute is uh, some key uh, actors that uh, joined us in our, in our attention with, with some, some money as well. So let me just focus, for instance, on Intel, uh, Pioneer, there is NVIDIA here, there should be LG around somewhere as well. Maybe some of you know LG, one of the most important pro producers of drones in the, in the world. So for instance, the perspective for Intel is producing hardware in, in, in specifically for what concerns sensors. Autonomous drive, autonomous car, we have to be filled by sensors. Still now we are at level three, we have five levels of autonomous drive going. Uh, going forward, and uh, we need sensory. So Intel said, yeah, good point to join Pia Technologies. Pioneer, infotainment, our future will be completely changed. It's true that the mobility as a service is key, but cars will still be there. Totally different cars, less, uh, less pollution, uh, not owned by each of us, as Roberto rightly said, but there will still probably uh, cars around. But cars will completely change this concept. The, the level five of autonomous drive means that the car goes really by it itself, with basically no responsibility by the driver on every street. This means that, if you think about, we're going to have a lot of, of free time to, to invest somehow, because there will be some passengers without the responsibility to drive a vehicle. And here, the giants of business around the world are, are not late on this essay. How are we going to invest in this time? What are we going to, to, to let these people do while they are spending time in a car like they were in a train? So infotainment, there won't be any more a navigation system or, a, or an i5 system. There will be much more, there will be multimedia, there will be cars connected, the films or whatever you have. So Pioneer is in the game, just to give you an example. And let me just finish this and just go quickly to 2018, another interesting milestone. Every, Dubai, I think, knows Dubai as being one of the most uh, famous laboratories, right, for technology in the world. So they're always experiencing and experimenting new things. And they choose the, um, here technology as the partner for developing their services, uh, relying upon our platform. By the way, if I can also complete part of the answer because I'm very passionate on this, uh, hip loop I think it, it works. Uh, of course, as Roberto said, it depends on the scale. I mean, not, not in South Tyrol, but in some parts of the world, the idea is amazing. And the Virgin Hyperloop, I'm not sure there are other Hyperloops around the world, is uh, partnering with here. It's another good, good milestone we reached for developing the Hyperloop. So I think it works. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I mean, I've been deep diving a bit, and I think the idea is great. There's a lot of uh, problems and, and technological stuff and money to be spent, but the idea to have a much higher speed than a flight uh, without getting into a flight. There might be some debates, and I, I, I agree, but, but the idea is really disruptive. Uh, okay, so basically, what we want to do now in here is to create a sort of, this is more or less the vision, a digital representation of the physical world. Uh, trying to get So basically, our maps were almost immediately digital contents. But from digital 2D, we moved to 3D. So this is what the market was asking and the still is asking. And from 3D, we enhanced the quality of what we do with the so-called HD, uh, high definition maps. This is the standard we are using now in terms of map to support autonomous drive that for obvious reasons remain one of our core assets, not the only one, as you will see. This is the great change for our company. From basically a business-to-business -business company oriented 100% or 90% in the car market, now we are changing very hardly, very uh, brutally sometimes, uh, to a company that is uh, committed and in business with plenty of sectors, from IoT to mobility as a service to smart cities and to, of course, autonomous drive for obvious reasons. But we wanted to integrate also in our data what is the real time. This is what the future demand. Think about again for a while to autonomous drive. We can't make without having real time information on traffic, uh, accidents, or weather, 
these are all influencing the good quality and safety, most of all, of an autonomous vehicle, for instance. So we integrated real-time data, but we want to give more, and we also minded about inside perspective, that once it was not enough in our business, now we provide uh, values maps and connected APIs to develop services also within business. Uh, we might talk just half an hour on venues map, of course we don't have the time, so this will be just an overview, just maybe to, you know, to, to spark something that for somebody could be interesting, for some not. So this would be just an introduction, of course. Um, and then, again, what is the idea is basically, of course this is the vision, so I'm keeping really high level for the moment. The vision is to have a world that more and more uh, moves, you recall my initial picture, so movement, and a world that moves in an autonomous manner as much as possible. Uh, of course, this would decrease stress, it would decrease money, this would decrease a lot of negative factors in our daily society. So how we try to do this, how we are trying to do this, we are trying to create what we call the reality index, to collect as much data as possible from reality, you will see now some examples, and then to meld them, to mix them, as I told in my introduction, with our solid location platform to develop new services, new business uh, uh, future, basically. So this is the idea. So not just location and POIs, point of interest, this is our, our tradition, let's say. We want to gather data from vehicles, real time, but could be also the tires consumption. That's another set of data we're interested in, for instance, to develop our service. And we want to go beyond roads with information and data on uh, um, uh, drones, on, uh, but as well, in beyond what we include also what it is, the representation of reality in terms of, of what we can see as well. So lakes, woodlands, buildings, everything about this is, is key to us to develop our services. And things, this of course refers to internet of things. And so it could be connection of things, connection of people by retrieving data from uh, Wi-Fi, from cellular uh, signals and so on. And we want to know and gather data, GDPR compliant, of course, about people, how much people aggregate in an area, why people are entering that mall and not the other one. It can open, of course, and disclose a lot of business opportunities, also this one. And spatial in the area, weather, pollution, real-time uh, flight timetables or delays to be melted together and uh, with location. And so, again, I think we are, um, we are convinced that location is, is, is everything, basically. And this is an interesting slide to close this introducing part with this interesting data. Uh, statistics tell us, they are a bit, a bit controversial about the percentage, but we don't mind. It's not 5%, okay? It could be 70, it could be 65, but I, let's say a remarkable percentage of all the data that the business consider key for high tech, for development, Let's call them big data, we, most of us know them, okay? Uh, wouldn't make that much sense, wouldn't make that much business opportunity in our development if not connected to location data. The, 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 I can give you just an example out of many. I mean, you think about Internet of Things, there might be a company that would like to track, I mean, the temperature of the food that they are storing in their containers while they are moving. Because uh, uh, according to the temperature, you, you might have some actions. It's melting, it's too hot, it's too cold, I need to move. This is an important data you can retrieve, also in huge amounts of data, so big data. Yeah, but where is the container? Which is the container and in which exact place, inside or outside, is right now the, co the container having this temperature problem? Location. So if you do not connect data with location, the data most of the time, they say 80%, uh, dramatically decreases the value and the potential of business. So, here we come to the point that was more or less a zipped introduction about here technology and 40 years of our history. This is just a screenshot of our developer portal. So, what we can do with our developer portal? The developer portal is, at the moment, the best door we offer to anyone, so not just companies, but then we have a, a, a close attention also not, not exactly the final consumer so far, even if we mobility as a service, we have a role and a vision in the future that uh, make us mind about
how they find a consumer, but that's another story. But here, let's say at least about a single person, let's call it this way, single developers, we can disclose with the location uh, services of the developer portals our services uh, to anybody, basically, without being a company, without having a budget. Uh, and this is what I wanted to share with you as the core of this presentation, basically. So uh, I wrapped up here some groups of uh, location services we offer to get you some examples uh, by title, let's say. So those are all containing several types of uh, services and related APIs. I stress again the fact that it's just enough to subscribe and to have access to our premium um, uh, premium uh, um, uh, opportunity, premium uh, uh, packet to uh, use our APIs for free up to uh, 250,000 calls to our house server per month, forever, so there's not a, a trial period, it's forever. And it's not needed not even a credit card as a warranty. As soon as you should or exceed the limit of use of freemium, you will be advised and you can decide whether to be charged or not. So this, by the way, is, is, is a strategy, of course, of the company, very transparently. And of course, it's, it's gathering a lot of people now because they see an opportunity also uh, compared to our competitors. So let me, let me share with you what you can find. Well, let, let's talk about our, our tradition, let's say. You can find APIs and solutions for maps to integrate in your application, in your, uh, uh, in your software, in, uh, on your web page, a map, a single map. It could be a map type, it could be a static one, it could be a dynamic one. And you have a high level of personalization, of course, about layers, about how you can pan it around, about you, how you can change uh, the layer, the graphs, etc. Uh, just to mention some one. Then you have, of course, included in this folder also venues maps. Venues map is interesting because we have venues maps of important venues. Of course, we are increasing more and more. This is part of our sourcing acquisition. Uh, but our customer can also integrate their own venue. Okay, I don't have an airport, but dear, dear technology. <laughs> I don't have a huge, a huge mall. So you, know, you I'm not finding my venue in, in your database. So you can integrate your venue and then overlap other services such as tracking other, as you mentioned in a few minutes, to have a solution, to have a new application or whatever. So also venues maps are included here. Let me just briefly mention now about, oops, sorry, I misused my, my own pointer, so good. <laughs> Looks like I'm tired. Search and geocoding. In this area, we'll find everything related to what we call geocoding or reverse geocoding and related APIs. Geocoding, the geographical language or GIS language means having a geographical feature, in this case, focus, be practical, Let's think about uh, a road name, a place, so a POI, or an address, and to get back from our servers, the position. Basically, what you do with the navigation system when you say, I'm in Via Alessandro, Man I, I want to go in Via Alessandro Manzoni, and the system will point you on your screen on Via Alessandro Manzoni. This is a geocoding process. So the, the, the system is retrieving and getting back to you coordinates when you give the system information about the road, a POI, or whatever. Reverse geocoding is the opposite. I, you have coordinates and you want to know what's here. Is there a place, is there a pizzeria, is it a road? And this happens when you tick on your touch screen, right? So you are giving coordinates and you get that information maybe with a pop-up. So this is reverse geocoding. These are all functions included here. You can also have, for most advanced, use the batch geocoding. So in that case, you will use an Excel file, and you can make queries for a huge amount of data. We go up to one million, uh, both for direct geocoding and reverse geocoding. Of course, there will be a, a time delay. It won't be immediate in that case, but you can retrieve from the system one million uh, feedback in code geocoding or reverse geocoding, for instance. Um, of course, here it's included as well everything that uh, relates to places in this, uh, in this suite, in this folder of our services. So places, you can utilize millions of places and hundreds of categories we have in our database. But of course, the evolution is 
you as a customer can add your own places and then use our APIs for searching to get your places only or your place plus, plus hours within your solution, within your application, etc. So I'm just touching base quite quickly, but of course there are many others in our development portal. Um, routing and navigation, but here is pretty intuitive as well for some of them, for some other, uh, there's a lot of uh, spicy stuff here. So routing, APIs for basically everything. Routing for pedestrian, routing typical for cars, uh, routing for intermodal solutions, so you are just by feet, but you would like to use, and we go in the direction of mobility as a service, maybe walking for a while and then using all the solutions available by bicycle, by uh, transit on that city, and then again uh, walking for a while. So our uh, seamless platform will allow you to, to have this kind of routing, selecting to, to use several potential uh, ways to move around. Uh, what else about uh, search and geocoding? Oh, sorry, we are with a Boolean navigation. So uh, routing of any type, um, um, intermodal routing, and here there are many others uh, included in routing and navigation, both for car and more specifically for trucks and fleets. Some of the APIs are transversal in these groups, but I just tried to group them uh, to give you a, a, a taste of, of everything. Uh, fleet telematics, this is more oriented, of course, to fleet, fleet of trucks, so company oriented, but not only. And here we have a lot uh, within. This is one of the most interesting ones, the, uh, the Waypoint solution, so basically a company can include their own places, their own venues, their own uh, retailer uh, shops, for instance, and the driver has a problem. In the morning, he would like to have the optimized route for reaching all its 20 or 30 uh, appointments or place to reach in the most suitable manner. What does it mean, suitable? There are a lot of factors included in this algorithm of the Waypoints API. It might be weather, it might be traffic, so maybe one morning uh, going from one to two to three is the most suitable solution according to weather, according to fuel consumption, according to various variables that are included. The day after, the algorithm might suggest you behaving differently because in this case there is an accident. So they are using our traffic APIs together to tell uh, the company know this, this morning, you know what, go from 1 to 3, and then to 2, and then to 7, and then to 11. And so this is really appreciated by companies. And we have much more here in Fleet Telematics. And uh, let me just mention what I also, I think, included in my presentation with Second Tech, what we call the Geofence. It's another interesting API that I think we can apply in, in any uh, situation also also about daily life geofence not not nothing more than an area you can define without APIs maybe a circle so with a radius for a polygon and by crossing that polygon with any connected peripheral so you might have your smartphone it could be a track with a GPS sensor so basically you, you need a GPS sensor okay you will have a response and you can personalize a lot so think about use case company with a track of fleet, but maybe also tracking on smartphones with a, a robust number of colleagues together in the same team and that connect the smartphone. It's free up to 50 peripherals connected. So I can basically, I was thinking yesterday, I can connect maybe my 12 years old boy that now is demanding for a smartphone. I think I can track the smartphone and know where it's going. And or I could also track my wife's smartphone to know where she's coming back home. No, no, sorry. This is private. Uh, so I can define a geofence around my house, and if I have registered three peripherals, for instance, I'm going to have a signal, and you can personalize this. Uh, as soon as uh, those peripherals, those devices, cross entering or exiting this geofence. So, joke aside, think about, for instance, a fleet of trucks and a company that would like to deliver on time at the harbor with all the loads already in their trucks. And they want to monitor and act on time in case of inconvenience, in case of uh, unforeseen and negative events. So for instance, they define a radius of 20, 30, whatever, kilometers around the harbor and the destination, the top of the destination of the truck. And they are supposed to have car number, uh, sorry, truck number five to cross 
that 20 kilometers radio in uh, uh, 20 minutes uh, from now. If this not, is not happening, there is a delay. Uh, so they can uh, proactively uh, contact uh, the, 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 the car, the, the truck driver, and, and, and find a solution, for instance, or redefine the routing with another API so that they can get on time on the, on the top uh, of the harbor. So just some example here and there. Let me just conclude, this is another miscellaneous, I, I, I mentioned some of them already, that they mention also tracking, very easy, very simple, it's similar to geofencing, but it's, it's more streamlined, so this is basically what reflects more our IoT sector commitment. You can track basically whatever you want and to elaborate the data in, in any manner without APIs, so it's just having a GPS sensor and you can do basically whatever you want. Uh, positioning as well is very interesting. We can uh, gather information, again, GDPR complied, uh, by, uh, uh, from uh, any type of peripheral, smartphones, um, or whatever is connected, to group them and give information to a third party. Think about practical here as well. Example, use case, uh, a huge venue or a big company could be also, I don't know, Starbucks. I've read an example, I think, about Starbucks, you know, stuff if I'm not wrong, and so you can define with high precision positioning even within the venues now. We have also, of course, leveraging on other partners for technologies. We use the beacons, the Bluetooth beacons, for instance, that allow to have a very high precision even within a venue. So figure out, you can have uh, customers entering a Starbucks and having a, uh, a signal to an API, a server, whatever is managing this, uh, this to an app, sorry, or a server or whatever, telling that now there is a user, anonymous, entering the venue and it's close to the door. So you can make a profile advertisement because it's in front of the door, or now there are many customers that are right in front of the cache, so maybe you can offer them something different because they are in front of the cache. So uh, via our technology, we are able to provide the support for this type of, uh, of, uh, of solutions, for instance. And so whether, of course, some of them need us to retrieve data from third parties, okay? But this is all about what, what we can do, whether as well. So let me just share with you, after this uh, deep dive, uh, a short video, I think it's one and a half minutes, with an example. I think it should not. Nope. Uh, can you? Should. Building location into your apps opens a world of opportunity. At here, we have over 20 APIs and mobile SDKs available for free to build new apps and services that people use every day. So imagine this. An ice cream company wants an app for a new delivery service, and they come to you. With Here Freemium, you have all the location tools you need to get started, whether you want to plot ice cream stores onto a map, help users search for opening times, contact details, and reviews, Optimize delivery routes for different vehicles. Or check local weather conditions to anticipate demand. You can even calculate the maximum distance before the ice cream melts. Plus with our tracking feature, you can keep an eye on delivery vehicles at all times. That's just one example. There are thousands more. So what will you build? Sign up for Here Freemium and you'll get 250,000 transactions free every month. No credit card required. Visit our freemium page to learn more. Okay, so it was pretty much uh, commercial, but it, I think it gives quite well the taste. I think here in this example, it's been mentioning uh, at least five, not six of our APIs. Those I just touched based about maps for sure, um, places because you need to know where places are, um, uh, routing, uh, I think for sure and geofencing as well, to define an area and have a reaction of how you're getting out, probably you won't be on time before you melt your ice cream, and so on. So I think it's at least five. Okay, I think we are running out of time, just I uh, wanted to show this, but I'll be really shortening it up in 30 seconds. We were sponsoring DroidCon Turin a few months ago, maybe some of you know, of course, DroidCon is one of the most important events, if not the most important for Android in Italy. And so this was a solution from the team who won the, the hackathon. It was pretty nice. So they basically tried to put together calendars from business and private life. That sounds like a panel, but me myself, I tried to 
keep two things separated because it's too complicated. First I need to work, then I have my kids to pick up. Why not to put them together and try to optimize with the best route, uh, with a flexible app? So they basically came to this uh, conclusion, starting with 10 tasks. Uh, six was already scheduled, four were not scheduled, just on my mind. And they saw how was the situation, the starting point. So they had uh, 42 kilometers to go, one hour and 48 minutes spent driving. So they tried to optimize using our APIs. I think they have been using waypoints and some others. For sure. So same task uh, at the same time constraints. One change in our plan along the day, so it's also flexible and smart management overall. They reduced to 57 uh, minutes instead of uh, 108, and the kilometers became uh, 21 instead of 42. Uh, so of course, 50% left of many annoying things like time, stress, CO2, and fuel. So these are just a few examples I selected. That was another. I'll skip it from the Rio de Janeiro 2016 Olympic Games. We have created an application to manage all the movements around. And that's all basically. This is our portal. So, my um, uh, warm uh, invitation uh, is to you uh, is to try. If you cannot try, just subscribe, create your profile. You will have two uh, uh, API personal keys automatically generated by the system as soon as you create your here profile from the portal and with those keys you will be able to use all the APIs. The developer portal is very well detailed, there's a lot of material, there are quick starts and there are also guide, complete guides for each of our APIs, so that's basically uh, from my side. These are our channels, so we have the developer blog, Twitter, we have also Stack Overflow with a lot of stuff already present there if you want to have a look, GitHub with a lot of videos now going on, also tonight there was a new one, and then you can subscribe to our developer newsletter. Thanks for your attention, thanks for being here again tonight, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Alright, so I could definitely see a use case, today we were going to buy the beers of Spec and Tech, yeah. and there was a... And there was a, an uh, incident, in English playing, in accident, accident. Uh, an accident, and uh, on the tangential there was an accident, and Via San Severino was closed. So yes. I can definitely see a uh, use case. Uh, we we plan like absolutely in 20 minutes to uh, to test yes, on that. So but let's go with the questions. So uh, they ask, are you planning to give game developers access to your services, maybe through Unity? I understood that it's an API, so I think it's agnostic. Correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. Sorry to. No, I, I'm still your job. job. Right. <laughs> no, and it's APIs in, in, in JavaScript, uh, uh, REST APIs, uh, and SDK. So they are. Yeah. Right. So they are asking that isn't there a risk to build the next control mean by building the reality index? Uh, can you rephrase it? Sorry. So it's like they are scared because you are tracing the reality and they're like, oh, you're doing evil stuff. Um, so now you have to excuse me, happy. I mean, uh, 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 honestly, okay, it's personal, so everybody's free to think about this way. I think we are in a world where more and more subjects are gathering a lot of data, but trust me, there is also a lot of control. Uh, so honestly, I don't think so, for a couple of reasons. The first one that come to my mind. First, we are transversal, so we're not only the data for, let's say, for ourselves. They are all uh, anonymous data, basically. Also, those regarding person. Or things they are strictly compliant to the new GDPR uh, policy, so I wouldn't say. And also, I wouldn't say mm, this is a risk. And also, we are kind of transversal because uh, this might be a limit, but it's also a strength from our side. We need other subjects to create mobility as a service. We need other subjects to create. We provide the location platform and the services, but they need other subjects. Probably most very well the situation in the public administration. If you want to create an IoT solution. Uh, you can rely upon here technologies, but it's not enough. So we're not really controlling all the business or all the people. Uh, uh, so I, I wouldn't see this this uh, this as a response. Yeah, I believe there is a talk about some kind of similar thing we had in the past by Roberto Saracco about digital twins. So if you're curious about the theme, is is really worth your time. Uh, moreover, then I have a several million uh, of dollars uh, question here. So. 
why not Google instead yeah. of earmuffs? I, I was thinking the same, to be honest. I think it's a big deal for you as well. Probably that's why you're so aggressive on the, on the uh, rate of premium. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. Um, I, I might talk for, for a few minutes because, of course, I have my, my perspective, but ju just a few elements. I mean, uh, it might be also better Google. I mean, I'm not here to say, here is better. I'm trying to give some elements to, to evaluate. Uh, one strength point, I think, is the one I said before. Uh, and I, I'm really true about this. I'm not, maybe I'll, I'll go to work with Google in, in a year, I don't know. So uh, I'm seeing what is positive here at the moment. That is the following. We just do this and we do it all over the world. I think the quality of what we do is higher, and not because I'm telling, but because how we are structured. In the sense that our business is providing these services. And so we can't, you know, be light on this. If we are not strict, uh, this was happening with our maps, and it happens now with the location of services. Uh, BMW or Mercedes or Amazon will just kick us in the ass and drop our products back, and, and we will lose billions of credit. So we are focused on that, not because Google is worse. They have another business. Google, I will say everything, I think nobody will be offended, even if there's somebody like Google, I know. Uh, has always the perspective of the final consumer. Even if they provide location services, that is not exactly the business. I'm providing you the location services because I'm interested in you as a company because I want to reach your final consumer for my advertisement, for everything I do. This is pretty clear. I don't think they will deny this respect. We just do this. We are committed in doing this, and it's a struggle. Uh, it's a struggle. That, that they are much richer than us because probably they differentiate. We just do this. And so I think this is one of the elements, the most important ones, uh, I would say. Then there are many others. And I would say now also premium, it's a matter of strategy. I don't know how Google has uh, raised their price instead of decreasing lately, but this is an important factor because it's cheaper, because it's for free, and I'm seeing a lot of migration. We have some buys in there, of course, where we track. All the, the, the companies and people who are migrating, and it's it's evident, it's remarkable. So also, why not? Yeah, also premium could be an option to say, yeah, it's for free. I just had a try, and I have 2,050 uh, calls to, to with these APIs. It's, it's it's not little, and also the pricing later on when you go priced, uh, it's definitely interesting. You can have a look. So these are the main two elements I have. Many more. Yeah. You know, so the main see. point is like you're doing business to business, and you're a service, and not like. A, I would say yes. And it's not like a branch of a company. It's like I would say you yes. Just do that, right? Yeah. Okay. So well, uh, they ask, what are the potential for data visualization? I believe there is a lot that you can do with this kind of APIs. So. Uh, sure, those, but you data visualization. Kind of yeah. Question. No, it's, it's it's absolutely key. Uh, yeah, there are. Uh, APIs for data visualization, you know, a set of APIs, and there is also a tool for a matter of time, I couldn't mention it, but you will find it also in the developer portal. It's called XYZ, it's pretty new, so it's in evolution, uh, but it was born to be simple. So you have the chance to upload the data set in various format of C CSV and many others, and visualize your data, personalize, and uh, uh, right now, and it's in evolution. So it was uh, as a draft since uh, uh, nine months ago, I think, and now it's live as a, as a, as a one point, or maybe we are 2.0 version, but it's constantly evolving. So it's X, Y, Z, and it's a tool you can find in our developer portal, absolutely. All right, a couple of questions, and then we are done, and we can have spec and beer, I guess, see you Sunday later, guys. Um, uh, me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, they, they're asking, is there any SDK for uh, offline, uh, offline uh, yeah. um, interactions? So, I'm, not, I'm not going really by memory to all of them, because there are many, but for sure, for instance, we have uh, offline routing for instance, um, which is really interesting because normally it's not even, it's one of the plus when you get connected that you can't have a, a routing when you are offline. Normally we have APIs for that. Um, and you can have a try also with maps. Maybe you don't know, we have our, our app in, in, for smartphone and uh, Android and iOS, which is Here We Go, which indeed has, it's one of its point of strength in this, it was offline completely, so you can just download your maps. If you go to Germany or to Switzerland, you just download your maps on your mobile phone and you don't need to spend data. So it was completely offline. 
so I would say maps uh, and places, of course, and routing for sure, the works offline. And we also have some function in tracking, very interesting with the offline. With the historical tracking or the interpolation of the data, when you get lost the signal for some of the peripherals you have uh, registered for the tracking, you can see offline where they have been before um, using other type of uh, registering of data with the uh, uh, cellular network or whatever, even if you were not online, let's say, off on the web. So yeah, these are the, the few ones I recall just by now, but th there's something more with offline. Right, then last question. Uh, there is also a one question that I, I can reply by myself. Are there any open positions for developers? And here they have a career page. I just Googled it. Please don't be lazy, guys. Um, <laughs> I mean, they, they're as big as you can. Oh. They, they told how big they are. So they are all companies of their size are constantly hiring. It's, it's a struggle to find developers. So. Well, yeah. to be completely frank, to close this, yeah, they are hiring and they are also cutting. Depends on the country and the role. For developer, for uh -huh. sure, there is room. Get oriented to go to Germany. To be very frank, so target to Berlin, target to Amsterdam or Eindhoven, where we have our headquarters, and and, and and stay stay tuned because there there is something moving around. Definitely, we are trying. They are trying to gather this type of position in terms of hiring, if not external collaboration. But if you talk about hiring, you must go outside. That is good at the moment. Uh, so if you are fluent in German, uh, uh, the last question, which was very interesting, um, they are asking. So um, Google is basically uh, taking the data from the phones because I mean it's, it's easy. Also from uh, Google local guides like Francesco, uh, which is probably mapping the world uh, when he's traveling. Uh, he is so active that Google paid him a, a, a trip to San Francisco, so he's, uh, he's now a competitor. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a very interesting question. You talked about uh, uh, that you acquire data, like buying it or that kind of thing. C can you like talk a little yeah. bit more about 30, that? 30 seconds. Yeah. Data acquisition is also the theme which I'm part of uh, with different roles. But okay, so distinguish in a second. What is data for creating our location platform? which is one story, and I'll tell you in a second. And another one is what I mentioned about all those plenty of data we might retrieve, like temperature, etc. This is just acquisition from third parties, and we then are now struggling to meld them together in what we call the uh, here open location platform, which is the step two from the developer portal. I didn't have the time to show you, but you will find information. So distinguish data for location and data for other stuff that we acquire. I would focus on data of location because this is our business. The rest is acquisition from outside. We create our location platform, acquiring data in various ways. Uh, the traditional one that was going by car 15 years ago, I've been working for 16 years for this company. We were driving cars around every day and then get coding in the office and then driving and then coding, etc. So now we have just around 400 cars, you have seen a slide, with the leader system, so high technology equipped, and they just try some roles. For the rest, we have various ways to acquire data. Sourcing acquisition from uh, public sectors, from other companies in a very structured manner. Once it was just, please give me the list of the new roads, now it is much more. It's acquiring data of any type, not just roads or names or places. It could be the EV station position, it could be everything that matters, uh, new technologies, etc. But it's in a structured manner. We deal normally with regions or with countries as well to acquire this data. Another is the crowdsourcing. So the community, we have a community as well. I'm managing this project for Italy, for instance, and so we have the community of mappers that at various levels gather data and provide us data. Of course, we need to find a win-win because we don't pay them, it's a community. But there's room for this in schools, in universities, in tourism as well. We did my first community in Sutro uh, five years ago, in this sense, with the LTS, LTS, LTS. So community, sourcing acquisition, and still cars on the field. These are the, the three main ones we use to, to create our platform. Yeah, I was about to say there is this open data hub. I don't know if you ever heard about it, that there is a lot of data. <laughs> this is already, for sure, scheduled in our sugar pages by my colleagues on data sourcing, and I'm sure they have screened that out. But I will double check. I was listening to you earlier, Roberto, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we made a connection now, so I can thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much again.
There were a lot of questions, so yeah, definitely people are were super interesting. And thank you again for being our uh, our presenter. So again, uh, these dates, uh, I don't remember what is that, Francisco? Okay, the spaghetti and the Ah yes, yes. So I always think because I, it is near my birthday. Yes. And uh, all right, so. So do you will pay a round of beers at the event? So another reason for joining. Yeah. All right. So thank you again, everybody, for coming. As usual, uh, this is the usual uh, said Julio telling you to donate at the end of the events uh, because otherwise Francesco have to pay uh, for for beers and he can't even pay for full length uh, uh, trousers. So go figure the beers. <laughs> Me either. Well, we are. Uh, yes. Did you like the menu? Can you raise your hands if you liked it? Cool. Okay. We'll be discussing with the municipality and try to be here also next time. Yeah. And also consider other options, but I think it was quite nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When? Now? Right? Later? For some more, can we sort them out from the names? No, 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 no. It's quite a mess. Yeah. But we can do it later. Yeah. yeah if Paolo actually brought a couple of prizes. So this awesome backpack and a couple of other things. So. Yeah. Try to stay around when we uh, give out the spec and the beers, uh, and now we will look for the winners and uh, give you the prizes later. Yeah. So if you hear your name, probably you owe money to Francesco or <laughs> <laughs> or the prison prize. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot for joining us. And that was it. Thank you very yeah. much, guys.